This is episode three of A Christmas Table where we show you the perfect proteins to serve on a table with all the sides and condiments that you might want. We are currently at Landers and it's clearly Christmas and we're gonna buy all the ingredients that we need to make a beautiful rellenong bangos. Now I've never deboned and stuffed one of these myself so I'm really excited to see how that turns out. You think I can do it? You think I can do it? Continuing on our Christmas videos, today is really a special day because I'm making one of my favorite recipes, Filipino recipes that I grew up eating, and that's a rellenong bangos. Um, and so basically, if you haven't heard of it before, it's bangos or milkfish that you stuff with various ingredients. Depending on where you are in the Philippines, people will use different stuffings. Um, in honor of that, I wanted to do one traditional one and one little less traditional one, a bit more fun, a bit more Christmassy. Um, so all we're gonna do today is prepare these two types of fish. We've already previously made kind of like Christmas dish ideas with other proteins, so now it's time for fish. So very simple, well not very simple, what you wanna start doing is get a whole bangus. So you have two options presented to you today. One is you talk to your suki at the fish market and you ask him to debone it for you. The other, if you're a superstar, and I know you are, you do it yourself. And all you gotta do is you need one of those kind of like flat long spatulas that people use for baking and icing. Um, and we're gonna use that to debone the whole fish. Step number one is you wanna make sure that the neck part is cut vertically. You peel out all the gills. You then very, very carefully without breaking the skin, take your spatula and kind of just keep going back and forth as close as you can to the skin. What we're trying to do here is to detach all the muscle, all the meat, all the bones from the skin. Once you kind of have a feeling that you can kind of run your palette knife all around the fish without it being or getting stuck in different places, you can then squeeze out the tail. Like really go to town with that fish and then push out all the meat. It should come out nice and flopped together. It will not look good, trust me. It looks really bad when you do it. It's like, like one of those. Um, and once all of that's out, then we can start marinating the skin. Very simple, calamansi soy sauce. Let it stand for about 30 minutes. Then we want to make our stuffing. So you're going to start by just uh, chopping up some onions and some garlic. That will be the base seasoning for both our stuffings. For one, we're going to seed and chop up some tomatoes and some potatoes. And then for the other one, I want to do something a bit different by using some corn. So I'm going to go ahead and get some fresh corn just take all of the kernels off the cob, and that's gonna be the basic ingredient for our second bangos. Then, very simple, you get two pans out, a little bit of oil in both, and then you add some garlic and some onions in both as well. Wait till that really becomes aromatic and you start really smelling that garlic and onions, just making friends, making babies, getting together, getting naked, getting sexy, loving it. And then once you have that going and all that seasoning and that smell is becoming obnoxious, just like I am right now, um, on the first one we add in our tomatoes, wait till they get nice and mushy, then we toss in our potatoes. On the second one, we're gonna toss in our corn, a little bit of miso and some butter. Just caramelize everything, get everything nice and friendly together. On the first stuffing, we're then gonna add in some raisin and some peas, very traditional, and some oyster sauce just to bring it all together. At that point, when everything's been stir frying for about five minutes, we then do the most annoying thing in the world, and that is to remove all the bones from the bungos meat. The bungos meat, what we do with it is we take it whole, place it in some boiling water, cook it for about 10 minutes until it's nice and flaky and tender. You then strain it, put it on the board, and then you start picking it. Picking it, removing the, the bones and everything, and if you get bored, call a friend. Once that friend's helping you, things happen much faster. You take all the meat out of that fish, you toss it equally in both pans so that both of them have equal amounts of fish. 
On the first stuffing, we're gonna add in a little bit of oyster sauce, make sure everything's ready to go. And on the second one, we add in the fish. We then finish with a little bit of cream just to bind everything together. Cool both mixes down. Once you've done that, add one egg each. This will act as a binder. Then we take our big little nice skinless or meatless fish, skins, and then we stuff it back with all that beautiful stuffing from both. Okay, now comes the interesting part. You have filled up your bangos completely. Now all we gotta do is dredge it in some flour and then try to close the neck. Do fish have necks? It's a solid question. I actually never thought about it. First of all, fish don't have faces, right? They just have profiles. It's the truth. That's why I don't feel bad about eating fish. Um, and so you could sew this uh, with some kitchen twine. Um, if you want, but you can also do it using small toothpicks. Um, what we're just trying to do here is while we're frying it, well, we're still going to be quite delicate when we do it, that the stuffing doesn't kind of go all over the place. Um, so we'll stuff, start with the first one, which is the corn. Let's put that down. The flour should help kind of make things easier to handle because it'll dry up the skin. And then we just got to attach these parts here. I think two skewers should be enough. I'm gonna put a third one, just in case. Drain the excess flour, and then gently put that in your oil. <laughs> I'm gonna burn myself, I know 100%. This is a wide mouth pan. Just slowly, oh! Swim, little fishy, swim! Second one, same thing. Close it up. Dredge the excess. Here for the frying, Slowly is better, so we're gonna take about five minutes per side. We don't wanna burn it too fast. That goes in, five minutes, we flip it. All right, these look like they're beautiful and good to go. Best served with some calamansi, some white rice, and some ketchup, obviously. If you can get your hands on some banana ketchup, then you know what's up. All right, let's try this baby out. Nice and full. You see, kind of like perfect, exactly how we want it to be. And it holds together, which is super important. I'm gonna dip that into my ketchup. Really solid. Let's try the corn one. Same. Nice and full. Dip that into some ketchup. That's really nice. It's a nice, really, it's a different twist. Like it's buttery, it has some creamy notes to it. Then the fish comes through nicely. You guys should try this one. It's not as kind of like eclectic in terms of flavor as the traditional one, but it definitely brings a whole different dimension of flavor that I think a lot of people would appreciate, especially at this time of the year where you just want to try people's foods, right? Because that's how you kind of converse around the tables, you sit down, if you're doing a potluck or if you're entertaining at home, people bring different types of dishes. And this would be kind of like a conversation starter if someone asking you, why would you put buttered corn in a bungos? And it just works, it's tasty. That was actually the first time I tried the recipe, so I'm, pre I'm pretty happy that it turned out really well. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we have more videos coming out. If you haven't watched the previous ones, make sure that you do. Um, because we've done kind of like these main proteins that you can serve during the Christmas season and try to help you out. Chicken, pork, beef, we're gonna do a seafood one as well. So this is all really made for you guys who are cooking during the holidays. You wanna get in the kitchen quickly. You wanna get out of the kitchen even faster because that's the important part is being with your loved ones and not slaving away in a kitchen for too long. So try this out if you liked it. Post a picture, tag me, I'm sure I'll see it. Um, and thanks for watching, appreciate it. Peace out.